Hello, and welcome back. I'm Christy, the voice behind Crafty Christy's Creation Silhouette Studio Tutorials, which is a subset of Crafty Christy's Creations how-to videos. This is the place to find step-by-step -step directions on how to do all the things in Silhouette Studio. Whether you're a beginner or needing a little refresher, this is the place for you. So grab your computer and open Silhouette Studio. It's time to dive into Welcome another Welcome back. Episode. Today I'm going to show you how to turn your ordinary die cuts into cutting files for Silhouette Studio. The first thing you need to do is use your die cut and cut out an image out of cardstock and take a photo of that image on a high contrasting background. You're going to upload that to your computer and then we'll get started in Silhouette. Okay, I have uploaded a photo of the die cut image on a background that is very contrasting. And now what we're going to do is make a trace of this image. So I'm going to click on the trace panel. I'm going to select trace area. And then I'm going to drag over this area. The more you mess with the settings here, the better trace you're going to get. So I'm going to bump up my threshold. And notice as you do that, the little dots that were here, the noise in the photo has gone away already but I've lost some of my tree limb down there, so I'm going to back it off a little bit. All right, 60%, that looks pretty good. The despeckle threshold, I'm going to um, turn up. And let's see how high we can get that. Notice there it started popping in spots for those. We want those holes to remain open, so I'm going to turn that back down. And we're going to leave it right there at 81%. The high pass filter we're going to leave off. And we are going to turn up the scale. That's going to help us uh, to kind of get smoother lines to get a smoother trace. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of fixing some of these little areas in here. So I'm going to keep turning that up until I see something crazy happen, and then I'll back it off. There, now it's popped in those two holes again. So now I know I need to back off on my scale. Okay, 46, nope, 45%, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit trace. And then you can take your original photo and move it out of the way. And I'm going to work kind of in the gray area off the mat right now, just to see how this looks. So from this distance, our trace looks pretty good. You can see over here, there's a couple little spots where it's brighter red. So that tells me there's something going on there. So I'm going to click up here to the mouse button and I'm going to click on that area to zoom in. So when you zoom in, you can see there's a little couple of small problem areas that we can clean up. You could really spend a lot of time and clean up all of these areas, however, I'm cutting this out of paper and I'm not really that concerned. As long as it looks pretty close to my die cut piece, I'm going to be happy with that. But what I am going to do is get rid of these extra little circles that are in here. So I'm going to right click. And to click the object, then right click and hit release compound path. Now it's going to let me have the entire piece. I am going to zoom out so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select off. Uh, I'm going to 
deselect the pieces that I want to keep. So all of these holes that are part of the tree that I want to keep, I'm going to click off. And I'm going to do the same thing for all of these trees. I'm going to do them all at once. Okay, and then I'm also going to click off of the actual big tree branch pieces. And now I'm going to hit let go of shift and I'm going to hit delete. And that got rid of all of our noise pieces that were left over. All right, zoom out a little bit more here so you can see. Now I'm going to grab this first one. I'm um, just click and drag. I'm going to right click and say make compound path. That way these little circles here will get cut out of the shape. And then I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to grab this long thin one. And do the same thing. Right click, make compound path. And the last one. Right click, make compound path. Okay, now I'm going to get these all close together. I'm going to grab all three of them. And then I'm going to grab a corner and shrink them down so that they will fit on my mat. And then I'm going to hit this little fit to window button so we can get back to our mat. I'm going to get rid of our trace panel. We don't need that anymore and pull up my page panel. Now I'm going to leave this at Cameo and my media size is 12 by 12. However, you have seen the scrap of paper that I'm cutting on and it is not a 12 by 12 piece, but my silhouette does not need to know that as long as I know where I'm supposed to be cutting. So I'm going to actually shrink these pieces down further because I'm going to be putting them on a card. So I only want them about four feet tall. That's pretty close. So I'm going to come up to the um, width and height section here. And I have to do each one individually, I think. And then I'm going to make them all four inches tall. If you lock this area, it will automatically change the width to keep it proportionate. Okay, now I've got them all to the size that I want. And as you saw, my cutting area, we're gonna rotate this guy. And I'm just using a scrap piece of paper that I found in my scrap bin. And I just know looking at my scrap piece. I know how far down it goes on my mat. So I know where to place things on here. So I am guaranteed that this is going to fit on my mat. So I'm going to go ahead and load my mat into my computer or into my, into my silhouette. I'm going to come over here to the sun panel. I'm using plain cardstock. I'm on a cameo too. So I have my ratchet blade tells me my settings and I've got everything over here where I want them. It's all set up and I'm just going to put everything in there and we'll get ready and hit send. Okay, all done. Unload. All right, so let's get this peeled off our mat and see how it looks. So this piece did not cut perfectly because uh, my mat moved a little bit, so oh well. But this one here, let's 
So when I compare this one to the one that was die cut, whoops, you can tell this one is smaller because I downsized from the photo, but they look just the same. So this is how you use trace to incorporate your die cuts to make them faster. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future crafty tips and tricks. Until next time, with love, Crafty Christy.